No, she couldn't tell anyone. They'd never believe her. And suppose that they did, and went up and poked around in the Picts' mound. She couldn't let that happen. What would Granny Aching have done? Granny Aching would have said nothing. Granny Aching often said nothing. She just smiled to herself and puffed on her pipe and waited until the right time. Tiffany smiled to herself. She slept and didn't dream, and a day went past, and another day. On the third day, it rained. Tiffany went into the kitchen when no one was about and took down the china shepherdess from the shelf. She put it in a sack, then slipped out of the house and ran up onto the downs. The worst of the weather was going either side of the chalk, which cut through the clouds like the prow of a ship. But when Tiffany reached the spot where an old stove and four iron wheels stood out of the grass and a cut a square of turf, and carefully chipped out a hole for the china shepherdess and then put the turf back. It was raining hard enough to soak it in and give it a good chance of surviving. It seemed the right thing to do, and she was sure she caught a whiff of tobacco. Then she went down to the Picts' mound. She worried about that. She knew they were there, didn't she? So somehow going to check that they were there would be sort of showing that she doubted if they would be, wouldn't it? They were busy people. They had lots to do. They the old Kelder to mourn. They were probably very busy. That's what she told herself. It wasn't because she kept wondering if there really might be nothing down there, down the hole but rabbits. It wasn't that at all. She was the Kelder. She had a duty. She heard music. She heard voices. And then sudden silence as she peered into the gloom. She carefully took a bottle of special sheep liniment out of her sack and let it slide into the darkness. Tiffany walked away and heard the faint music start up again. She did wave at a buzzard circling lazily under the clouds, and she was sure a tiny dot waved back. On the fourth day, Tiffany made butter and did her chores. She did have help. And now I want you to go and feed the chickens, she said to Wentworth. Was it, what is it I want you to do? Feed the chuck chucks said Wentworth. Chickens, said Tiffany severely. Chickens, said Wentworth obediently. And wipe your nose, not on your sleeve. I gave you a handkerchief. And on the way back, see if you can carry a whole log, will you? Back crivens, muttered Wentworth. And what is it we don't say, said Tiffany? We don't say the... The crivens word, Wentworth muttered. And we don't say it in front of... In front of Mummy, said Wentworth. Good. And then when I've finished, we'll have time to go down to the river. Wentworth brightened up. Wee oui, wee oui, mens, he said. Tiffany didn't reply immediately. Tiffany hadn't seen a single feagle since she'd been home. There might be, she said, but they're probably very busy. They've got to find another kelder. And, well, they're very busy, I expect. Wee oui, wee oui, men say... Hit you in the head, fish face, said Wentworth happily. We'll see, said Tiffany, feeling like a parent. Now please go and feed the chickens and get the eggs. When he'd wandered away, carrying the egg basket in both hands, Tiffany turned out some butter onto the marble slab and picked up the paddles to pat it into, well, a pat of butter. Then she'd stamp it with one of the wooden stamps. People appreciated the little picture on their butter. As she began to shake the butter, she was aware of a shadow in the doorway and turned. It was Roland. He looked at her, his face even redder than usual. He was twiddling his very expensive hat nervously, just like Rob anybody did. Yes, she said. Look, about, well, about all that, about, Roland began. Yes. Look, I didn't mean, I didn't lie to anyone or anything. He blurted out, but my father just sort of assumed I'd been a hero and he just wouldn't listen to anything I said, even after I told him how, how helpful I'd been, said Tiffany. Yes, I mean, no, he said. He said, he, he said it was lucky for you I was there, he said. It doesn't matter, said Tiffany, picking up the butter paddles again. And he just kept telling everyone how brave I'd been and I said it doesn't matter, said Tiffany. The little paddles went pat, pat, pat on the fresh butter. Roland's mouth opened and shut for a moment. You mean you don't mind? He said at last. No, I don't mind, said Tiffany. But 
It's not there. We're the only ones who know the truth, said Tiffany. Pat, pat, pat. Roland stared at the fat, rich butter as she calmly patted it into shape. Oh, he said. Uh, you won't tell anyone, will you? I mean, you've got every right to, but... Pat, pat, pat. No one would believe me, said Tiffany. I did try, said Roland. Honestly, I really did. I expect you did, Tiffany thought. But you're not very clever, and the Baron certainly is a man without first sight. He sees the world the way he wants to see it. One day you'll be Baron, won't you? She said. Well, yes, one day. But look, are you really a witch? When you're Baron, you'll be good at it, I expect, said Tiffany, turning the butter around. Fair and generous and decent. You'll pay good wages and look after the old people. You wouldn't let people turn an old lady out of their house. Well, I hope I... Tiffany turned to face him, a butter paddle in each hand. Because I'll be there, you see. You'll look up and see my eye on you. I'll be there on the edge of the crowd. At the time, all the time, I'll be watching everything. Because I come from a long line of aching people. And this is my land. But you can be the Baron for us. And I hope you're a good one. If you are not, there will be a reckoning. Look, I know you were... were Roland began, going red in the face. Very helpful, said Tiffany. But you can't talk to me like that, you know. Tiffany was sure. She heard up in the roof and on the very edge of hearing someone say, Back Grivens, what a wee snotter! She shut her eyes for a moment and then, heart pounding, pointed a butter paddle at one of the empty buckets. Bucket, fill yourself, she commanded. It blurred and then sloshed. Water dripped down the side. Roland stared at it. Tiffany gave him one of her sweetest smiles, which could be quite scary. You won't tell anyone, will you? She said. He turned to her face, pale. No one would believe me, he stammered. Aye, said Tiffany. So we understand one another. Isn't that nice? And now, if you don't mind, I've got to finish this and make a start on some cheese. Cheese? But you, you could do anything you wanted, Roland burst out. But right now... I want to make cheese, said Tiffany calmly. Go away. My father owns his farm, said Roland, and then realised he'd said that out loud. There were two little but strangely loud clicks as Tiffany put down the butter paddles and turned round. That was a very brave thing you just said, she said. But I expect you are sorry you said it now, that you've had a really good thing. Roland, who had shut his eyes, nodded his head. Good said Tiffany. Today I'm making cheese. Tomorrow I may do something else and in a while, maybe, I won't be here. And you'll wonder, where is she? But part of me will always be here. Always. I'll always be thinking about this place. I'll have it in my eye and I will be back. Now, go away. He turned and ran. After his footsteps had died away, Tiffany said, all right, who's there? That's me, mistress. No as big as medium-sized jock, but bigger than we jock jock, mistress. The pixie appeared from behind the bucket and added, Rob, anybody said we should come to keep an eye on you for a wee while and to thank you for the offering. It's still magic, even if you know how it's done, Tiffany thought. Only watch me in the dairy then, she said. No spying. Ach, no, mistress, said not as big as medium-sized jock, but bigger than we jock jock nervously. Then he grinned. Fionn's going off to be a calder for a clan over near Copperhead Mountain, he said. And she's asked me to go along as the Gonagall. Congratulations. Aye, and William says I should be fine if I just work on the mouse pipes, said the pixie. And, er, uh, yes, said Tiffany. Er, uh, Hamish says there's a girl in the Long Lake clan who's looking to become a calder. Er, uh, it's a fine clan she's from. Er, uh, the pixie was going violent with embarrassment. Good, said Tiffany. If I was Rob anybody, I'd invite her over right away. You didn't mind, said not as big as medium-sized jock, but bigger than we jock jock, hopefully. Not at all, said Tiffany. She did a little bit, she had to admit to herself, but it was a bit she could put away on a shelf in her head somewhere. That's grand, said the pixie. The lads were a bit worried, you can. I'll run up and tell them, he lowered his voice. And... Would you like me to run after that big heap of jobbers that just left and see that he falls off his horse again? No, said Tiffany hurriedly. No, don't. No. 
She picked up the butter pedals. You leave him to me, she added, smiling. You can leave everything to me. When she was alone again, she finished the butter. Pat, pat, pat. She paused, put the paddles down, and with the tip of a very clean finger, drew a curved line in the surface, with another curved line just touching it, so that together they looked like a wave. She traced a third flat curve under it, which was the chalk, land and a wave. She quickly smoothed the butter again and picked up the stamp she'd made yesterday. She carved it carefully out of the piece of apple wood that Mr Block, the carpenter, had given her. She stamped it onto the butter and took it off carefully. There, glistening on the oily, rich yellow surface, was a gibbous moon, and sailing in front of the moon, a witch on a broomstick. She smiled again, and it was Granny Aching's smile. Things would be different one day, but you had to start small, like oak trees. Then she made cheese in the dairy on the farm, and the fields unrolling and becoming the downlands sleeping under the hot midsummer sun, where the flocks of sheep moving slowly drift over the short turf like clouds on a green sky, and here and there sheepdogs speed over the grass like shooting stars, forever and ever walled without end. <laughs>